Did you know our next virtual aesthetic marketing seminar is happening May 16th and 17th? We are bringing you two days of no nonsense, straight to the point strategies that are working right now in spa so that you can gain the time freedom and financial freedom that you want and deserve. If you're already enrolled in a program at Addo Aesthetics, your ticket is totally free. And if not, you can still join in on the fun for only $97. Head on over to the link in bio on our Instagram page at Addo Aesthetics to get more info and your ticket today. All right, Mindy, welcome to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. I feel like mindset, and you're so much more than a mindset coach. I mean, when I was reading your bio, it's like, that's like the most simple version, but you're a hypnotherapist, you're NLP certified. Talk me through for those who don't know what that means. Just give me kind of in a nutshell like the work that you've done to get to where you are? Oh my gosh. In a nutshell. In a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> a lifetime um, of let's personal see, I was, growth and I was born on March 2nd, 1972. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me here. I am so excited as well. Uh, every time the reminder popped up, I was like, oh, I can't wait to be with Danielle. I'm so excited. <laughs> In a nutshell, uh, the work that I've done has truly been my entire adult life. I have coached, mentored, taught, been in that space to realize there's something more. There's something more. I get to go deeper, uh, trying on a way of being, a way of achieving, and then realizing, oh, there's a better way to do this. Sort of one of my superpowers is doing it, making a mess, and then guiding other people through doing it and not having to be so messy in it. Uh, I can get you there quicker, definitely, because I'm a researcher and a digger. And so I've gotten up underneath all the things, which brought me to hypnotherapy is where you align your conscious and subconscious. So, so many times we're out of alignment, right? Like consciously we're thinking something, but our subconscious is like, yeah, no, honey, that's that's not happening. um, One of my girlfriends is getting certified as a hypnotherapist right now. And she is doing it. She's a, a coach where she teaches you know, online courses and whatnot, Mm -hmm. but she's getting certified as a hypnotherapist to help her students. And she has just a huge, huge following, but she wants to help them get over their money blocks and their Mm -hmm. mindset blocks and their beliefs and all of these things. And it's so incredible. So my listeners know for a long, like I'm a spreadsheet girl, the, or like I'm married to a MIT PhD engineer you know, like (laughs) my world is very structured, (laughs) you know, and, but I also am really open to other, like, you know, we use 10% of our brain. Mm -hmm. So what Mm -hmm. else is out there that, you know, these people that are very much into the world of woo and all of these things, like I'm, I can't discount that because I have no idea what our brain is actually capable of. And So hypnotherapy, even though I know there's a lot of science behind that, I know even the military uses hypnotherapy and, um, to treat PTSD and different things like that with soldiers, there's, there's a lot of science. It's something that is so deeply, like, I have no idea what it's actually doing, you know, cause you think of like, look into exactly. My oh my gosh. You're, you're like in my head right now. Cause this is exactly what we, we see the creepy man with the tall hat. Yeah. You look into my eyes. You're getting very sleepy. That's exactly what we think. And it's so like shame on the movie, you know, industry for making us think that hypnosis is anything but a tool to reveal and release the limiting beliefs, stopping us from being the most amazing humans ever. That's it. That's all it is. It's a, it's one more tool. And I, I do have to, I have, I know I've shared this publicly, um, on the podcast before, not to bring anybody down, but, um, when I lost a baby, I was going through some really deep turmoil 
Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I was like, I have worked way too hard on myself to lose myself at this point. Mm-hmm. So I was doing EMDR, regular therapy, like working with coaches. I talked to a psychic, like that is way, I was like, <laughs> whatever, I'm open to it all. And hypnotherapy was the thing. I did hypnotherapy. Mm. Two weeks later, I stopped having the just bursting into tears at any mm. random moment where it's it still is a deeply painful of course thing for me. And it's of something course. that I will carry with me my whole life, that mm-hmm. baby, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't having the same issues of just not being able to function in the day to day. And it was probably a month or so. I don't remember the exact timeline, but then I got pregnant with Luca. So it was like, I, I had to heal the emotional piece. Mm -hmm. I had to give myself a good month, I think just to, you know, regroup or whatever. And then Luca came into the world or came into my body. (laughs) How divine. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm so sorry. I can completely, absolutely completely understand your pain. I have been there and what a beautiful, like other side that you, this is what we all get to do. Be ready and willing to do whatever it takes to keep evolving to keep becoming the next level version of ourselves, the person we're made to be, the person we are on the inside. And we're just constantly like turning that knob and turning that knob and not necessarily turning up, but turning into, turning ourselves a little more into like who we are deep down inside. Well, and I I wanna bring this back to business and something that I, I believe in deeply is if you have a desire, you have the ability to create whatever that desire is. So if I am dreaming of building a seven figure or an eight figure spa, I'm capable of doing that. There is something that means I am capable of doing that, but our mindset is so critically important. I feel like after a hundred thousand, once you hit that first, like you've got to have some strategy, you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to have a good quality of service. But the more I've grown in business, the bigger I've gotten, the more I see how much work goes into really focusing on my mindset and understanding, identifying, and moving past these beliefs that I had held that I didn't even realize were there. Exactly. And and that's the thing is like hiring is always going to be hard. Like I was just talking with a gal before I got on this call and she's like, you know, everyone gets stressed about hiring and I just know. I just got to the point that I just accepted. It's always going to be hard. And I said, well, then it it is always going to be hard. Exactly. Exactly. You decided, right? Yeah. I was like, it's not hard for me. We, yeah, we, we statistically, lots of people can hustle to a hundred thousand. Like you can do some, you know, not sleeping and all these things, right? You cannot continue to out hustle your beliefs though. And what got you there won't, get you any farther. Cause you are going to run into those things that it doesn't matter what strategy you have. If you say, I have a desire to grow my business to seven figures. And yet you have limiting beliefs that say all kinds of contrary things to that, all the hustle, all the strategy in the world, it's not going to matter because you are not embodying the human who can implement the strategy, can find the ease in hiring, can all the things, right? Can can shift from some proof that it doesn't work to also proof that it is working. How do you get to line that up? Like there's so many pieces that fall into place with the mindset. So I wanna talk about this thing that you're calling mental rehearsal. And for me, this was so cool because like I still remember like, 10, 15 years ago when the secret came out, I was living in Hawaii we were all like, we had this movie night, we were all watching it. And this guy puts this Ferrari on his board and he's, and then all of a sudden he has the Ferrari and we're like, what the hell? Like, what is this? This is ridiculous. 
And I know a lot of people loved it and really got into law of attraction and all that stuff. But I was like, okay, people, you can't just put a picture on your cork board and then it's going to show up. They're missing the action steps. And I feel like the way that when we talked before this call, you were walking me through mental rehearsal, which is really visualizing yourself in that and, and creating this step-by-step process of what visualization actually is. And for someone like me, I need that step. Like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? If I'm visualizing, like, (laughs) what does that mean? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So can you walk us through like how a business owner, how a spa owner can use this mental rehearsal to help them reach a big goal in their business? Yes, absolutely. So first, um, yeah, the secret was missing a couple of things. <laughs> we could just wish really hard, but boom. It, it, it resonated. I so mean, many people loved it. And I am so happy. It's a beautiful like, starting point. Yes. Like it is a fantastic starting point because you are then looking to embody all those kinds of things. Right. So you get to visualize, but it's more than visualize. Cause some people are going to say, Oh, I don't, like, I, I don't see, I don't visualize. Okay, we're going to do more than that. We're going to embody it. We're literally going to dive into a swimming pool of what you want. So we're going to see it. We're going to hear it. We're going to taste it. We're going to feel it. We're going to smell it. Like, what, is, what does your spa smell like? What does it smell like in the office of a seven-figure spa owner? Like, what does it feel like? What does it sound like? Like... What else are you hearing? It's reminding me. So when I first started at Aesthetics, I was working primarily as a con- consultant. So I'd go into medical spas. I would work with the skincare companies. Um, the whole like online thing was not a thing for me. I was very like, I'm going to be a consultant and that's my thing. And I got this opportunity to speak at a conference and it was a black diamond event. It was for physicians. There were 200 physicians there that were all at a very, like several hundred thousand a month in injectables, like very, very high level. And I remember feeling so less than, and so like, these people are so much smarter than me. What do I have? Like, who am I to be even up here teaching? Like all of these very common beliefs for women and I remember what I did was I, I had read um, DVF's book on like being a woman, or I, I can't even remember the title, but it's a big picture of Dion von Fustenberg. It's her face mm-hmm. and it's her story of like creating the wrap dress and how she was nine months pregnant, going around knocking on doors, like this incredible story. I was like, this woman is incredible and so motivating. And so I bought a wrap dress, which I had never even like <laughs> heard of her before someone had recommended the book. I already so I know where this dress. is going. I already know where this is going. <laughs> I put the dress on. I was giving my presentation to my dogs about 700 times. I was wearing my shoes. I picked where I was going to like my pauses, all of those things. And so in a way I was visualizing absolutely what it was going to feel like to be up there, to be speaking, to make my jokes, to hear the words come out of my mouth. And that in that speaking engagement that I had was a really pivotal point because I got another contract with that company. I then went on to work with five of the top physicians dispense skincare brands in the world. And it's all because this industry is such a small world, right? You Mm -hmm. get one referral, then one referral, then one referral. And it came down to that moment. Cause if I would have bombed that moment, I probably would not have gotten the referrals. So you were embodying the woman who I love that you put the wrap dress on. Cause like, that was you like tapping into your inner (laughs) <laughs> right. It was like, like, like you know, like, like Beyonce yeah. has Sasha Fierce. I yeah. was like, all right, who is going to be? Exactly. Exactly. You know? Exactly. The mental rehearsal, the beauty of mental rehearsal that, I mean, there's so many beautiful things about it. Number one, Olympic gold medalists use it. So this isn't some like silly little thing that I made up. I have just been obsessed with using it to help people rewire their brains. So as you mentally rehearse, what you're doing is you're taking yourself from point A to point B. You can mentally rehearse 
anything you want. It is so second nature to me that I mentally rehearse all the time. I mentally rehearsed before this, right? Like boom, boom, boom. I knew what I, where I was starting and here's the key. Know where you want to end. What is the well-formed outcome? So for me, the well-formed outcome is your most downloaded episode ever. All right. <laughs> That's my well-formed outcome always, right? So I see it going. I see us going from point A to point B. I see, and this is the perfect path from point A to point B, right? Everything goes great. You show up, I show up. That's always a plus, right? Our All live streaming stuff. tech issue was not probably mentally That's, rehearsed. You but. know what though? But so here's really like I, if, if I could, I'll go even a little deeper. Normally I keep everybody on the surface because I just want you to practice going from A to B, seeing yourself. The reason that you get to do this is your brain doesn't know the difference between real and imagined. You are taking stress out of it. Every time you mentally rehearsed yourself, every time you physically rehearsed yourself too, you took stress out of it because your brain then by the time you got up there was like, oh, well, we've done this a million times. This is nothing like we've already been here. You get to start that by mentally rehearsing it, seeing it, hearing it, tasting it, feeling it, smelling it, embodying it. And that can literally be like, how do I want to feel by lunchtime? Like who, who, do, how do I want to show up for the first five hours of my day or whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and having a well-formed outcome. So we practice the, the direct route, the perfect route where nothing happens. I know that in order, that's not how it always goes. <laughs> right. <laughs> So because I'm so well-practiced in it, I also practice <laughs> plan B and plan C and plan B and C always have technical difficulties because, hey, here's the beauty in them. They're never going to throw me from delivering the most downloaded episode. Like they're not going to throw me off my game. And that's why we get to mentally rehearse because whatever's coming the only thing that you and I and everyone listening can control is us. <laughs> so we might as well just show up. Okay. So let me ask you something and you may not have the answer to this and that's, and that's fine. Um, but my tendency when I'm, because we don't know the outcome, right? If there's something crazy that goes on, like, okay, mm -hmm. I will tell you. When my son was born in the beginning of April, 2020, just a couple of weeks after the world ended, right? It was like COVID, no one knew what this was. The hospitals, they weren't even letting your spouse in the room at the time. There's all this stuff going on. So I'm getting ready to deliver 80% of the spas. Well, all the spas at that point were shut down. Shut down. I'm going on maternity. Family is my top priority. I'm not going to give up my maternity for my business. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? And I said, the worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to close my business. Mm -hmm. And if I close my business, then, you know, we'll adjust our lifestyle, whatever. We'll figure We're it out. Still going to be able to put food on the table. And when everything, when we move past all of this, I'm just going to start again and nothing, no one can take anything that's out of my brain, right? Like I have, I've built it this far if I restart, then I'm going to go so much faster than anybody else because I've already done all of that. Oh, I just got so goosebumps. That was my that. thing that I was like, you know, I'm not going to mess up my maternity. And we ended up having one of our, at that point, it was our biggest year to date. Fantastic. And so that's, I think a good thing. However, I try every single day excuse me, to focus on a positive mindset. Mm -hmm. so I always wonder if I'm going to the worst case scenario, is that really training my brain to be positive? Or is that just saying, well, the worst case scenario is not that bad. I, excellent question. And there's a couple answers in there. First of all, as long as you don't camp out in the worst possible scenario and let it spiral you down into this is of course what's going to happen you are i'm guessing being realistic like and going okay i'm going to check this because 
If that happens, I'll figure it out. Like you're just reminding yourself who you are, how resilient you are. Mm -hmm. Positive mindset is not unicorns and rainbows and nothing ever goes sideways. What I, when I hear positive mindset, I get a little bit like good vibes only, uh uh-uh, only love and light. Like that's not, this, this is unrealistic. This is not how we function. We do function in reality and stuff goes sideways and things happen that, that we don't love. And we get to have an empowering mindset, Mm -hmm. a mindset that empowers us and moves us forward. So for you, it's empowering to remind yourself that even if the worst thing happened, you're going to be fine. Now, some other people might not function empoweringly in that way. And so then we do some rewiring and find a better path for them. You're embodying you. You're fully embracing who you are and reminding yourself, like, this is how we continue to cast the vote. I love to say cast the vote. Like every time you show up for the future version of yourself, for the one who's gonna show up no matter what, for the one who, if need be, would rebuild everything and do it faster. Like every time you cast a vote, you're solidifying your vision of identity. And what we didn't talk about, so I want to finish mental rehearsal. And then I want to talk about identity. I even wrote it down because this is, this is huge too for people. So when I say have a well-formed outcome in your mental rehearsal, right, it might even be like being more hydrated. So let's be more specific. Let's say I want to drink eight uh, eight ounce glasses of water a day. Okay. So I mentally rehearse myself doing that throughout the day. I see my timer going off, you know, to remind me, I see my cute glass that I love to drink out of. I hear myself, you know, I don't know, singing some song that I made up about water, whatever, like go all in. And as you're triggering me to drink a glass right now, (laughs) have, this is, this is your life. My friends have fun with creating the ways of being that serve you. Like being hydrated serves you well, hydrated women run the world. Like this is, we need, we all get to be hydrated. And there's the Instagram quote, my friends, well, hydrated women run the world. (laughs) Hey, I I'm serious. (laughs) Anyway, so you're mentally rehearsing this. You're seeing how you have a well-formed outcome. Here's what we do every time we cast a vote, right? So now I've gone through it. I know how I want to be. I wake up in the morning. I have my first glass of water. I cast a vote for that version of me. I'm not only casting a vote for the outcome of by the end of the day, having 64 ounces of water. I'm casting a vote for becoming the woman who, of course, she drinks 64 ounces of water. She is a hydrated woman. There's a difference. I don't just want to drink one glass of water. I want to be hydrated. I don't just want to read one book. I want to be a reader. And here is where this, this separates. I almost said the men from the boys, right? <laughs> this, this, is, this is where we, we separate. Anyone, pretty much anyone, can grind it out and make something happen one time and do all kinds of unsustainable things. When we start shifting into empowering mindsets, habits that serve us, that continue us toward the outcome, the outcome is is just a milestone. The icing is that we have now become the woman, the human who. Mm -hmm. We've got the process down and now we just repeat it. Here's where NLP comes in. NLP is the study of excellence and the habits of excellence is a very, like, is my definition. And so now we just get to, because your brain loves to automate, you think a thought habitually over and over again, it becomes a belief, comes after I am, you then create habits that prove it to yourself. I think a thought over and over again, I'm a water drinker. I'm a water drinker. I'd love a glass of water being hydrated. So amazing. I'll get to run the world. And then I, I, I am well hydrated. I am a water drinker. Then I create habits to prove it to myself. Pretty soon it's on automation. Mm -hmm. Now I don't even think about it. Like, and here's where we then come into our secret sauce for mental rehearsal. And this is called your of course energy. 
So you said you'll go to like, well, what if like worst case scenario? So I'm mentally rehearsing my podcast. I'm mentally rehearsing my big talk. You, when you're doing your big talk, right? I'm mentally rehearsing getting more water in. And if this is not, I, I, what I don't want to be is an energy of, I wish, I hope, I hope mm-hmm. this podcast goes well, right? This is energy of disbelief. We're already like, we're, we're already not in the law of attraction. <laughs> if, we're, if we're in energy of disbelief, like the picture of the glass of water, is not going to help. <laughs> so we get to shift into our, of course, energy. This, this is truly the magic. So we all have empowering, of course, energy where we are on autopilot doing something that completely serves us. So whether that's playing with Luca, whether that's walking the dog, whether that like whatever, whether it's drinking a glass of water, the first thing in the morning, when you get up, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's positive, empowering, of course, energy, like, of course, you're going to kiss Luca goodnight. Like the only thing that's going to stop you is you're not home right? Like, or whatever it is that this is your, of course, energy. It's simple to tap into. You just close your eyes. You get, you find it, you get into it. You see yourself kissing him. You see yourself walking or playing with the dog, like whatever your, of course, energy is. Take a deep breath, pull in that energy because you're being the woman who, or you're being the human who, and now you just copy and paste that onto your mental rehearsal. And now of course, you're going to kill it at your talk. Of course, this is going to be the most downloaded episode. Of course, I'm going to have over eight glasses of water today. So who I am. For a, for a spa owner, would there, of course, be, of course, I'm a six-figure spa owner. Of course, I'm an incredible leader. Of course, I'm going to have a successful event. Like, are you thinking of bigger picture identity I, or more granular on individual outcomes. It's going to depend on the spa owner and you get to start where you're at. So if your of course energy is of course I I really want you to like practice this in a really small way, little hinges swing big gates. So if you want to start in the of course I pet my dog, of course I go for a walk every day, of course I like have a nighttime routine that serves me find that really simple, of course, energy and copy and paste it onto your mental rehearsal. Here's what your brain will say. If you're not a six figure spa owner yet, and you're like trying to, you're pretending in of course energy, your brain's going to be like, yeah, Uh, we looked at the checkbook and (laughs) that's not exactly what it said. So you get to start moving the needle towards that. So if you're if your of course energy is real and believed and completely automated, you can copy and paste that onto your vision, whatever the vision is. You're in the energy of already being her. You're already being the person who shows up for you and takes care of you and does the things that nurture you. It doesn't matter that it's not exactly in the same vein. So it's like saying, of course, like, how would a six-figure spa owner re- respond to this client? Or how would a six-figure spa owner I love it. dress and show I up for work? It. How would a six-figure spa owner answer the telephone? So this is how you cast your vision. This is how you have your mental rehearsal is you ask yourself those questions and okay. then you're developing it. And you're, of course, energy. It could, seriously, I... I It's of course I get up in the morning and brush my teeth. I don't even think about it because it is in my identity. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give everybody an example. Um, Do you smoke? No. Have you ever smoked? No. Okay. Would you, do you think that you will wake up tomorrow and think to myself, "Hmm, I wonder if I'll smoke? No, no, because it's not in your identity. Of course you're not going to smoke. Now I'm an ex smoker. It's been 28 years now. And I do not wake up in the morning and think, I wonder if I'll smoke today. It's not even a thought because it's not in my identity. So we're constantly building into the identity of a six figure, seven figure spa owner. And the way that we do that is we start asking those questions like what's in my identity right now 
that completely nurtures and serves me? And how do I get to continue to cast votes for what kind of books does she read? And who is she hanging out with? And how does she talk to customers? How does she ground herself first? Does she like have her on hand essential oil that she like... Okay, now I'm ready. Now I can now I can handle this happy customer. Now I can handle this unhappy customer, like all the real things that happen, right? Something that happened for me because I got a lot of this advice of like, well, what would a seven-figure owner, business owner do? And at that point, I was like, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know seven-figure business owners. I don't know what they do. And so I started trying to change my circle and find other people. And that was something, the other people like by joining masterminds or yeah. by joining, you know, that where I always wanted to be the smallest person, smallest business, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like so the smallest fish or whatever. So you could learn. So I could learn. And that was something that was incredible, incredibly helpful for me when I was apparently doing mental rehearsal, even though I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. Yes. So the beauty in that is you were looking to enlarge that identity, right? When you started. So here's how we manifest. I'm going to go back to the secret. Here's how we manifest anything we want. Know what you want. Take action. Check the data. Be willing to change. You knew what you wanted. You wanted you wanted to become a seven-figure spot owner. You took action. You started surrounding yourself with people who were, so you could really see what that felt like. You checked the data. So if you were in a mastermind and it wasn't serving you, you weren't growing, you weren't the smallest, it wasn't me, like you checked the data on it. How is this? Is this a good place for me? And then you were willing to change. So you were willing to do something different to continue to become this identity. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And it was so, yeah. it's so interesting because one of the gals in my mastermind last year, um, she does 25 million a year. Oh. And that was so you know. <laughs> mind blowing to me. <laughs> Pocket change. Right. But I, I mean, that was not even a real, when I thought of a yeah. seven figure business, I thought of 1 million. Well, like, right, right, right. Did you cross 1 million? <laughs> and this lady She's incredible. She's incredibly accomplished, incredibly sweet, all of these things. But she was also asking me tons of questions. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, she's just a normal person who's done extraordinary things. And if she can do 25 million, then it's possible for me to do it as well. Yes. And yes. that was a big, like, just thinking there are people that I know that generate 25 million a year in their business, yeah. which was just mind blowing. It is mind blowing. It is mind blowing because most of us do think of it as like million, right? Like we're just, at the, we're just, at the One million we made. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here's, here's what you told me about the identity of someone who makes $25 million a year, right? She is willing to learn and grow and change. So it doesn't matter, everyone listening, whether you know a six figure, whether you know six figure spa owners, whether, you know, as you're asking yourself, like, what would she do? She would be willing to listen and to grow from someone who has not made as much money as her mm -hmm. because everyone has something to teach us. That is so, yeah. You know, my favorite quote is from Bill Nye, the science guy, who says, Every single person you meet knows something that you don't. Mm, absolutely. And I, that is like an approach to life for me. I love that. Bill Nye, the science guy, man, that guy is smart. He is smart. Yes. He is smart. <laughs> okay. So, so, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say like in kind of wrapping up this conversation and giving our spa owners next steps. Mm -hmm. What can we just kind of recap quickly? Like yeah. number one, you know, figure out what you want, do the yes. mental, or like kind of walk yeah. them through this process because this Absolutely. was a ton of information. So the easiest way to begin, we call it a well-formed outcome, right? Start small, just, just try this on for size, right? Do it for a couple days, a week, feel it out. Like this is not, don't try. I, I, I really... 
I'm not a fan of the word try. So I can't try to put my glasses on. I either put them on or I don't, right? Like, like we're not trying, try it on. So try this on, pick something, more water, up five minutes earlier, something that's going to serve you. Something that you've been thinking about, that you've been wanting to do, that empowers you and moves you closer to this big dream that you have for yourself. And you get to start, again, little hinges really do swing big gates. So pick something, pick a well-formed outcome. See yourself doing that. Maybe it's even the way you greet your spouse when they come home from work every day, kind of a thing. Maybe you want to shift in that, like whatever it is, see yourself doing it. What are you going to hear? What are you going to taste? What are you going to smell? Dive into a swimming pool of it and just roll around in it because your brain doesn't know the difference between real and imagined. Here's what you're rewiring your brain to do. Right now it deletes, distorts, and generalizes based on what you believe. So as you start shifting that belief, as you start seeing yourself doing it a little bit different, feeling a little bit different, hearing things a little bit different, right? Your brain will start to filter things a little bit different for you. Now that you've seen a $25 million a year spa owner, not, I know she's in your mastermind, so business owner, okay? Mm -hmm. You can't unsee that. Your brain now has a new place to filter through. This is the same thing for us. We just start opening it up for ourselves. So have your well-formed outcome, know what you want, mentally rehearse it, take action, <laughs> like, like show up as the woman who, yes. right? Yeah. Show up as the woman who put your, of course, any energy on your mental rehearsal. Like, of, of course, of course, I'm going to do this with ease. It's what I really want. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm saying with ease, right? Because when we're in alignment, when we're showing up to be who we want to be, then there's much more ease in it as opposed to trying to be somebody. I think that's a really important piece to remember because it's it's not always easy to be a business owner. When we're constantly Mm -hmm. pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone to grow, we've got to get really comfortable being uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. and that can be challenging, right? That can be really challenging, but it doesn't mean um, that it's not worth it or that you're not going to get more benefit from that kind of short-term pain for long-term gain. Exactly. And I love to ask myself the question, like, how can I create more joy and ease in this? It might just be switching my perspective on it. So you said that you were speaking to someone and she just decided that hiring is always going to be hard. Okay. Well, (laughs) there's no joy and ease in that. Is there (laughs) like, Ooh, right. Like, Oh, just everything like got so heavy with that. How can I create more joy and ease in this? I could collect stories of people who find hiring really easy (laughs) And I can start just sitting around them and listening to them. I can do so many things. Like, what am I willing to change in order to get what I really want? Because you, what you really want, right, is the hiring com- is there's ease and joy in it, right? Like, like there's all these gains in hiring, not all these losses, right? She can change her story or she can pass off hiring to her manager. Exactly. Like, there's you know? so many things. And she decided kind of a thing. And, and this is no, like, if you're listening, whoever you are, we love you. And this is a beautiful time to get curious. Like there's zero room in empowering mindset for shame and guilt. No room. Like you just get to check it at the door. What oh, she, this girl is going to like change the world. Awesome. She's incredible. Well, yeah. She's in year three of her business. So it's ooh, like, what yeah. there's always room for is curiosity. Get mm-hmm. curious. Like, Why do I think this is going to be hard? And here's the beautiful thing, because I don't really want to do it. Okay, good. Then don't do it. Pass it off. Just like you said, like that's about being aligned is knowing you've made this decision. And here's what makes you say, this is why I've made this decision and I'm going to pass it off. It's not my zone of genius. I don't want to do it. Yes. That's a boss fan of passing it off. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you've decided that it doesn't serve you and that you're not, you just don't even want to try to find joy and ease in it. Right. What are you willing to do so that there gets to be joy and ease in hiring? (laughs) Give it to someone else. I love it. I love it. All right. So for the most downloaded episode on the Spot Marketing Made Easy podcast, 
Can you please tell us where our listeners can find you, follow you, stay in touch with you? Yes, absolutely. And I do have a guided recorded mental rehearsal for them. So they don't have to make this up all on their own. They could just follow along and really create what they want to create. So well, I, I just that makes it more super easy, easy. and joyful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can find me on LinkedIn and on Instagram, Mindy Hebner. just my name. I am on Facebook, but it's not my favorite place. So I, I'm not there very often. And somehow my phone just deleted the app, which is like the universe. Telling me. Well, Facebook and Facebook, I have live streamed into our group 10 million times. And today, and it, today it did not work. It did not work. And so I'm like, okay. But I right. am on Facebook as well. And I will respond <laughs> on Facebook. I love Instagram um, and LinkedIn. Yes. Yeah, so you can find me in all those places. Mindy Heepner. Okay, perfect. We'll include some links below this episode. Thank you so much. This was super helpful. I want you guys listening to really just put some energy and attention on mindset on it is such an important piece. And I think the way that it gets talked about oftentimes doesn't always resonate with everybody because we get in that doing mode of, oh, I've got all these things done or that I need to do, I need to check off my list. And like, I mean, I know who doesn't love checking off a checklist, but we've got to really put on our checklist to work on ourselves and to work on our mindset and to really be able to see big picture. It makes a world of difference. So I would love to invite them to just ask themselves this one question as, as they put this on their checklist. Who am I being right now? Who Mm -hmm. am I being? Am I being the seven figure spot owner? Am I being like, who am I being? And again, it's just a, like a curious, who am I being? Where am I making this decision from? How am I showing up? Wonderful. All right, my friends. So if you want to keep this conversation going, please head on over to the Spa Marketing Made Easy Facebook group, tag us, and we'll catch you in there and on the next episode. 